Okay. Now we've gone to some of the kind of theoretical aspects of future st studies methods. Now I'm showing you an example how to make uh, scenarios we're using a Delphi study as a, a research material gathering. This is an actual study that we have made uh, at the Finland Futures Research Center together with the Natural Resource Institute uh, of Finland. And <clears throat> it's about a small business. Uh, namely agricultural farms, which in Finland are considered as small businesses. Perhaps not in all the places in the world, they are more considered like a class of people, but here we consider them as a one family businesses typically. So, uh, renewable energy in farms, why we're we studying that? Well, it has, might have some benefits for the farm first, that you don't have to buy uh, so much oil to run the farm or electricity, or you might sell the energy and provide additional income to the farm, then it might keep rural areas lively, although the urbanization is a kind of a mega trend, and it could reduce the greenhouse gas emissions when we are looking to uh, find solutions for the climate issues. Now, this was our Delphi study in, in a nutshell. Uh, we had a three-round exercise. Uh, the f we looked at the expert views of this topic in Finland. After 2030, this is a study which was gathered uh, a couple of years back. Uh, the the first one was carried out by having a questionnaire, a kind of a closed questionnaire, but also an open interview with these people. Uh, 28 people were interviewed. Uh, the second round questionnaire was sent to the same people and actually a couple of more because we found that some important aspects are missing. Uh, and we got 23 answers for that. And then the third one was a stakeholder workshop where people were discussing the scenarios and actually voting for the desirability and probability. Uh, this could be called a hybrid Delphi study, somewhat related to uh, John Landeta's uh, group's uh, views. But what is important to note is that Delphi study is not a poorly executed uh, survey. There is no random selection of the participants, but they're hand-picked. Uh, we are using a specific criteria for picking up the experts and uh, having 25, uh, 30 uh, experts is quite normal in Delphi studies. Uh, the numeric responses were grouped with cluster analysis and then the qualitative material from interviews was kind of uh, used to enrich the scenarios. But the question now is that how probably or preferably will each of the energy forms, we have 11 energy forms, would be used in Finnish farms by 2030. Now this is the criteria for choosing the experts. The expert is matrix. It was developed by Osmo Kuusi, a Finnish futurist. Uh, it defines expertise in two categories, the cognitive expertise, uh, something that people, what the people know about. And here in this particular panel, people, we wanted that people know about agriculture, renewable energy, uh, climate policy issues, economy, technology, society, and then we wanted people who have a natural scientific background as well. Then the social expertise, which tells you uh, about your profession, how you have uh, looked at from other people in the society, not just what you know, but what is your position. <clears throat> and we have people from, uh, from retail or trade in this graph, mass media, industry, food industry, uh, advisory services, which are important in the field of agriculture, uh, interest groups uh, or lobbying groups, you might say, uh, uh, and non-governmental organizations, 
administration, people having actual access to a farm, and people from uh, research or development or innovation categories. And uh, if you calculate all this, uh, you sum up all the numbers, you will find that it exceeds considerably the 28 people. But it, uh, this is because we, uh, one person, of course, can have possess several expertise. The energy sources that we considered here, we had re four renewable energy forms uh, that are not based on burning something. Solar energy, wind energy, hydropower and heat pumps. Now then we had the biofuels which are burned, uh, biogas, firewood, liquid biofuels, fuels and other biomass burning. Physical biomasses that could also be burned. <clears throat> They're not gasified or liquid. Uh, and then some mainstream technology, fully or partially fossil fuel dependent. Oil, uh, gas, and then bulk electricity, which we call the normal electricity, which you get with no particular green electricity contract uh, from the national grid. This is the type of question that we used. We ask, uh, you can see from the rows, you have each of the 11 energy sources. And then we asked about the probable future uh, up to 2030, and then the preferred future. And they are here side by side, so, uh, so that you can actually relate the answers to each other. It's a seven-step Likert scale. It doesn't define any uh, megawatt hours or uh, that kind of specific things. But they are more like... Uh, scenarios which show the direction where the world would be evolving in the future. When, when we got the answers, we reorganized the matrix and we used both the estimates of the preferred future and the probable future as two different, uh, two different cases or units of analysis in the cluster analysis. Uh, the cluster analysis, the one of the outputs of cluster analysis, looks like this. Uh, you read it from the uh, left to the right. And individual responses are here, uh, uh, one of the uh, number points where the, uh, uh, where the tree or the branches of the trees. And then you can see that the branches are going together little by little, and then they constitute a bigger branch, and then finally uh, they come together all. This is the hierarchical cluster analysis principle. The ones, the answers which are close to each other are grouped together, and then the answers which are far from each other, they are uh, at, at, uh, grouped to different clusters. And then the, uh, we chose uh, six clusters for further studies and actually we looked three clusters and I uh, know we looked also five clusters and seven or eight clusters but then we decided that it's uh, it becomes too messy and this is something that we can still consider as separate scenarios and why we don't have here <coughs> uh, you remember that we got 23 answers for the second round, so we had uh, 46 cases that could be analyzed, but five of them were incomplete, so cluster analysis could not be run with these cases. So we have got, at the moment we have like 41 different scenarios of the future. It's too much, it has to be grouped somehow. And this way we can uh, cut it, uh, kind of structure it to six bunches. Now, these, this uh, uh, incomprehensible table tells you, uh, using the traffic light system, on the rows uh, we have the scenarios, and then on the columns we have the energy forms. And we, I will not go into detail with the actual scenario outputs, uh, but you can see from the red ones that things are going downwards, the energy sources, for example, with the uh, boiler and pump uh, scenario, 
use of oil will go down, natural gas it will not be uh, used a lot, and the other renewables are not going up either, they are red. But then the burnable, the combustible biofuels are going up rapidly. So we call it a boiler and pump, as the heat pumps are, are the only other renewable energy which is not, uh, 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 which is uh, used in this scenario quite a lot. Incremental change is something that nothing much happens. Energy boost is something that almost every uh, energy form will go up. There's some kind of new innovations in Finnish agriculture and high demand of Finnish agricultural products. Uh, sorry for the sarcasm. Uh, the energy boost, we had two separate uh, scenarios, where plus and minus. Well, you can see for the miners, the natural gas is down, uh, uh, hydropower are uh, less up, wind power is less up. Otherwise, they are rather similar. Renewable prosperity says that you can see the mainstream technology will go down, and then all the renewables will go up. Energy savings, that is a partic uh, particular scenario where one, uh, uh, where the uh, main idea is to save energy and not produce it. Not with the traditional forms and not that much with the new forms either, or the renew renewable ones. Okay. I can see people in the classroom nodding, so this might make sense. Uh, I think I have to run forward. This is the same, these are the same scenarios. Here we put the middle value of the scale. Uh, which, if you remember, it was a seven-step liquid scale. The mid-value, number four, was put as zero. And then we look at each of these uh, bulks or bars uh, are one scenario. And in, uh, looking at the colors, you can see that the green ones are the burnable uh, uh, biofuels. And they go rather much up in most of the scenarios. Uh, whereas the other uh, renewable energy forms uh, go down in, in the first boiler and pump scenario and then the energy save scenario. And you can also see that the fossil fuel based uh, energy production was not used so much in Finnish farms in any of the scenarios according to these experts. This could somehow be interpreted as a also as a forecast, if nobody kind of believes in it, uh, uh, or everybody kind of somehow believe that the renewable energy will go up, it might even do so in the future. I will skip these parts, but uh, as a final uh, summary, you could use Delphi method in, in making scenarios when you expect that large changes might happen in the future and you might not find these changes in, by using mathematical models or that the change in the relationships between key variables in a mathematical model might be changing. Uh, it's much easier to kind of just uh, vary some parameters as inputs to the model and keep the model structure the same. But if you would like to manipulate the actual relationship between things, uh, then it might be uh, caused, uh, um, considered as doing wrongly, depending on the discipline where you are in. Uh, but in this case, you might do a Delphi study. Uh, if strategic change uh, might be a good option or is strongly preferred, uh, uh, then uh, a scenario, uh, Delphi studies might produce something more than just a business as usual future. And some, uh, instead of using futures workshop uh, where people meet face to face, uh, they could, uh, this could be, a, this is an anonymous process so it means that uh, people do not have to be afraid of losing a face 
if they say something stupid on the first round, they can correct it for the next round. Okay, that's about their first study and scenarios. Thank you.